I'm appalled at what you said on that pod thing. It's disgusting. This is the After the Show podcast. It's where we get honest and real with your ass. So sit back, relax, have a blast, because it's time for the After the Show podcast. Yeah, hello and welcome to the KBG After the Show podcast. Happy little Monday here. What a uh, beautiful weekend. Had Gorgeous. Took full advantage. The of weather it. was so good. Yes, it was uh, nice. Uh, hit uh, Fort Lauderdale on Saturday. Really good time. A little bar hop. I love uh, going to just different areas. You just always find a little nook, some new little place that's uh, kind of cool, uh, that's awesome. And one place that I've been there before, but this place uh, just kind of jumped out this time El Camino on Las Olas. It's a really cool concept. Uh, If you don't know where it is, right there, it's kind of like in the main little pocket of some good places right across from the uh, hotel. And they have parking in the back. And then they've got, it looks almost like a little covered alleyway. But the bar is in the alleyway, so you can kind of stand in the alley and still get drinks. And they have TVs there. And it just had, especially for an outdoor vibe, just something about it. Just had a really cool little vibe. I was like, okay, kind of feeling this. I went south, too. I did Del Rey on Saturday, which I usually don't get down that oh, south. Oh, no way. So we went up and down okay. the Ave. We uh, went right at there. A Pineapple Grove, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pineapple went in Grove. there, introduced uh, Panda and Rocco to Boba Tea, which now they both love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. ramen. Yeah. We had drinks. We went up and down. It was fun. You must have just missed Caitlin. They were uh, on the Ave no. on Saturday. Yeah, they uh, were at Sandbar. Okay, the, uh, I know where that there. is. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. down at the end, and they've got uh, they got a new sports bar that they just opened up. I haven't been to yet in Delray Market. I uh, saw Delray Market. That place is big. Yeah, it might be cool. And there's also, if you don't know, there's a rooftop uh, bar that's on in a hotel there in the Pineapple Grove area. You can go up. But we've gone up there and had drinks. It's nice. kind of yeah, it's kind of a cool area. You love your there. rooftop bar. I do. I love the rooftops. We went down there to support uh, Cruiser Palooza yeah. for our friend who is uh, in a wheelchair. He had a water sports accident when he was just 16 years old. Mm-hmm. It was so crazy. So we're walking around the event, and I look over and see my friend that owns Ocean Properties, him and his family. Oh, no way. And yeah. I'm like, hey, what are yeah, you doing they're based, here? Uh, they're Delray, basically. They're Delray, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. He's known the family because his son is the same age as Cruz. When Cruz got into his accident, it was just two weeks after he had taken all these boys to Costa Rica. Oh, wow. Okay. They all went to Costa Rica huh. together. They yeah. all had fun on Mike Walsh's boat. And then yeah. when they came back to uh, Del Rey, they were back for a couple of weeks. And that's when he got into his water sports accident and has been in a wheelchair ever since. Hmm. So the whole festival is a concert to raise money for him and his ongoing care, which is sure. very expensive. Yeah, it is. So it was really beautiful. Spread the Dub was out there. Yeah, they said to tell yeah. you guys hi. Okay. Yeah, this, I mean, I promote like every show they do. So. I love them. Yeah, they're fantastic. They, to me, the best party band in South Florida. The weather Florida, was cooperating. Yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was a great day to be out. So, yeah, we had a, had a ton of fun. So I went down there and uh, did bar hopping all over the place. Found a couple new places I want to go check out. I always love uh, seeing nice little wrinkles. I never even thought about going south. Um, there at the ocean on Los Olas, but there's, uh, you know, we, we, in fact, we were talking about Bubba Gumps. I didn't even realize there's a freaking Bubba Gumps around the ocean because I always go north when I get to the elbow room. If you know that strip, there's yeah. all those bars that go up that way. So I always go north, and there are a couple little places south of that. They had a Bubba Gumps here up in Jupiter back in the day, and I loved yeah. Bubba Gumps. And when I say I love bu- Bubba Gumps, people would give me such shit over it. Like, <laughs> Bubba Gumps is not good food, Bird. I like it. But you like Red Lobster. <laughs> I do. So it's very much on par. Mm. I do. So, so I think all of those places have stars on their menu. Yeah, so it, it we were talking about just a couple places. You know, places are either kind of uh, on the ri- uh, they're rising up or they're on the decline. And Bubba Gumps was one of those places, mid '90s, early 2000. They were all over the place. And I was thinking of locations that they used to have, like they used to have one in Jupiter up there on the water. Uh, that's gone. They put one uh, in New Orleans, and <laughs> that didn't last. No, I mean, my gosh, you, you don't got, need it. No. 
Good heavens. Yeah, because you're right. If, <laughs> you know, it might stand out if you got all burger joints and people are like, oh, it's good seafood. But I mean, if you're in, I mean, come on, there's no way that concept works. And that's why I'm surprised when I saw him. Like, oh my gosh, they got a Bubba Gump's here? I didn't even Tourists. That. Yeah, Tourists love it. Probably right. And, and part of me yeah. wonders am I getting the environment of Bubba Gump's? Because it was right on the water and it was beautiful. You mm-hmm. can see the lighthouse. And I liked going there because of that reason. Did that make shitty food taste better? Yes. Yeah, it does. It, it does. does. It Envi- totally does. Environment so much. It really is. There's places I got to that are mediocre that I would go back to because it's just the ambiance and the vibe and the look. And that's why you pay for, you know, those kind of places. And I feel like those chain restaurants, they do, there's always something good on. There's something good there. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're consistently mediocrity. <laughs> but, <laughs> they, but, but you're not going to go and get, like, you know, a terrible meal. It's going to be fine. Yes. Everything's going to be fun. The decor is fun. They're, they're well-appointed. Yeah. It makes you think, though, how many shitty meals ha- have you eaten because the place was just a nice place? Sometimes shitty food gets away with murder. You know, they get a few. We've got a couple places. There's, uh, I won't uh, name them, but there's a, a couple places that I love the ambiance. It's great. But the food is kind of, mm, it's a little mid. <laughs> and the queen is like, eh, I can tell she's about to tap out of it. When she's fully <laughs> tapped out, we ain't going back. So, like I said, it's got cool ambiance, but it's it, you look a restaurant. That game is tough, man. It, it is, is tough. A tough game. It is because everything, especially in South Florida, everything has to be on point. In other towns, shitty restaurants, I'm sure, thrive for decades and generations. You're but, right. You know, here, no, it's it's so tight <laughs> that you know, hey, I mean, there's eight thousand other places to go if that place is not if everything is not awesome. That's why you see Sizzler in certain towns, but it's you know, I mean, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, the town <laughs> I'm from, the whole town is full of shitty restaurants. <laughs> It'll be open forever. Are we going to have shitty pizza or shitty chicken? I mean, the, you don't know any better. Like, hey, you just, you know, to you, you think that's the high level. That's that's the best you get. Not only shitty pizza, I mean, but the shittiest pizza of, on the planet. Jay Bird went. He had it. <laughs> He's not speaking out of turn. A part of me was just so excited to try the pizza crossing, the place you've always talked oh, about. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe I hated it, but it was across the board with everybody. Well, probably a lot of what I just said. It's yeah. Every, every yeah. place is so shitty that in Logan, and that's the best place you got. And it was jam-packed every time. Every time. Yep, yeah. They'll, they'll be open forever with their shitty pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but what, I mean, if anybody came in that town and opened good pizza, it could shake shit up there. Yeah, but maybe it's just, it, it maybe the price point doesn't work. That's the thing. I've always had big dreams of, you know, being a successful businessman in my hometown, but it, it ain't, it, it's not like Boca. If you know what I'm saying. I don't <laughs> want to disparage the overall income but you know if you make thirty three thousand dollars in logan you're probably upper one percent even wow. today you're thriving yeah really yeah it's it's not a rich town maybe i'm kidding because th- those parts where i visited and maybe there's some because what happened since i've lived there there's been an influx of rich people from columbus columbus is booming and they're getting ready to open up a whole big tech uh, section kind of like where that uh, Les Wexner is set up camp. Oh. That area is about ready to pop, I guess, and microchips or something. I, I've I've heard about it in the roundabout way, and so those people are pushing south and they're invading because they do have the caves. Yeah, and people are wanting that beautiful nature. And when people were able to work remotely, then they started getting a cash influx. You probably started seeing a little bit of that. And plus, it is beautiful. I kind of like the 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 restaurant thing. Maybe a shitty area is even more beautiful because of it. It looked richer to me when you say thirty three thousand. I was kind of surprised, but maybe because it was so beautiful with nature, I thought it was more of a rich area. Yeah. I'm getting tricked again. up around the caves and all that stuff. Yeah, you are going to see they're they're getting very expensive. Those places are expensive. And the caves that. are fun. Yeah. Oh, I love a cave. I bet. Yeah, little little, little, little sex in the cave. Not you and me. I'm just. Are saying. you inviting us? <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> I think he just propositioned us. No, I'm saying they're so beautiful and they're cozy. I could see, you know. Remind me not to go cave <laughs> hunting with you. I think that came, that came out completely wrong. All of a sudden, I'll be in the cave and I don't know what hit me. God damn! <laughs> So, yeah, so we were talking a little bit about uh, Bubba Gumps, and then the other place that uh, seems like it's on the decline is the Mellow Mushroom. 
because they had a place in Delray. They had a place in West Palm Beach. Those are both gone. And I'm hard pressed to think of, okay, how many mellow mushroom locations do we have now in South Florida? They seem to be disappearing. I'll never forget. I went into Mellow Mushroom one time, and I was in mm-hmm. there. Jimmy Buffett was in there by himself having pizza, and he was kind of like undercover with the mm-hmm. baseball cap. Yeah. But I was like, I think that's Jimmy Buffett. That's so funny. It my, was him. My um, Mellow Mushroom story is I was walking in there, and I met some KVJ Nation. There was a mom and her, and her little kid, and it was the night the new, the brand new Star Wars came out, the one that I was excited for, and I, I did a really great job of not finding any spoilers so oh they're like hey Jaber, we just saw the movie i go oh that's great please don't tell me anything and the kid looked at me and goes your smuggler dies meaning han solo dies and he ruined the movie for me dang and then i was going oh fucking wow. kid that fucking that kid, fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> and the mom saw how sad I looked because I'm so sorry, Jay Bird. Oh, no. <laughs> and then I ate all this pizza. <laughs> I tried to drown my sorrows. I did. <laughs> so uh, coming up this weekend, we got the Crawfish Festival. Jay Bird and the Snack Pack are going to be performing at 5 p.m. on Saturday. They're on the main stage at uh, downtown Abaco in Jupiter. Come out and see that. And uh, KBJ Lifer, Cynthia. She sent us an email. She said, I was just thinking about last year's Crawfish Festival and cracking up because for some reason I thought it was a good idea to go on a first date to this event. (laughs) (laughs) Your date had to be like, what the fuck is this? She said, uh, I am from Louisiana and I've won crawfish eating contests in front of hundreds of people at Mills Pond Park in Lauderdale. Back in the day, I weighed 135 pounds and I could take down 10 pounds of crawfish, no problem. Love you. And the look on my date's face when I was doing such a thing, sucking the heads and pinching the tails was priceless. Needless to say, there wasn't a second date. (laughs) And that was probably for the best. Don't try to hang with the big dog. (laughs) Yeah, you need to come out and you need to find you a man at the Crawfish Fest. Because there's going to be plenty of men there that would be so impressed with your sucking head and pinching the tail and all that. I mean, the uh, the commissioner over here, Virginia, she's got the snack pack at 5 p.m., a very good party time for the festival. It's an ideal time slot. I really looked at, you know, when the sun would be setting. Okay. When the perfect weather yep. condition would hit. The temps are going to be a little cooler is what I'm hearing oh on gosh. Saturday. The ladies' morals are going to be a little bit lower, the standards as well. That's what I, that's what I'm, that's what I yeah. want. Girls, if you're single, don't bring no man to the Crawfish Fest. You come to the Fest single and you try to hook up. At mm-hmm. the Crawfish Fest. It is, snack pack get you pregnant. It's, it's, fa- it's family friendly, but yeah. you never know what's going to happen. Kids <laughs> 12 and under get in free. It's friendly there until you leave. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just, I never know what's going to happen on, on the stage. I'm going with every intention of not trying to offend families. But just, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I uh, got an email here from Aiden's Adventure. says, I do Uber, and I picked up a lady from Boca Marriott who was at an annual meetup. She had done 23andMe a few years ago, and she knew her dad was a dirtbag and wasn't expecting 74 siblings. They meet here and New they he, they meet here and New Jersey, and I think it was like once or twice a year. As they're all pretty spread out. As she was telling me, I was like, uh, "No, really." But she was about sixty-ish and old, and not joking. So, yeah. So, How many kids? Uh, sounds like uh, seventy-four siblings. Oh my Can you gosh! That? that dude must have just been like a silly spreader. Maybe he was a sperm donor that was just always broke. Or maybe he just liked to. Spread I mean, that seed. Spread that seed. Some guys just cannot pull out. They just can't. can't stop, 75? Yeah. Just that they found? There's no fucking way he wasn't a sperm donor. Oh, he was a sperm donor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he may have been doing it the, the real... I, I'm telling you. He may I, have been authentic. The, the, there are people who just can't help themselves of just... Damn, your, your just, juice is strong. Just going all in and not even thinking about <laughs> strong juice. Yeah. Just kept going. Just kept going. Uh, let me see. We have the results in from our All Things Awful bracket. As uh, March Madness started to wrap up, the ladies finished yesterday, guys finished tonight. And it got close. When we checked this morning, our All Things Awful bracket... 
had a 50-50 tie between cancer and murder. Oh, my gosh. They said it was going to be close, but. Yeah. And at the end of the day, cancer bumped back into the win 53 to 47%. That's our winner. Cancer is the most awful thing that is out there. And some people are just fine saying, well, murder started to get it because some people are beating cancer. And more and more people today are beating cancer than ever before. So murder is, you're dead. Well, cancer, you can't beat murder. Right. And that's what some people are saying. It wasn't because cancer had 61% of the votes on Friday. I thought it was over and done. Then we come back in. I'm like, what happened? 50 50. And the justification did make sense. You don't beat murder. Cancer, you beat, you can beat cancer. It sucks. Also, too, the. The, the people who, the, the, the cancer community, they are a strong community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they, and they know how much it sucks. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that did it. But yeah, I, I guess when you put it that way, you do beat cancer. You don't beat murder. Murder, murder doesn't happen unless somebody's dead. So that is a 100% every single time somebody's dead at murder. Murder. We get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should be murder's catchphrase. Murder. Yeah. Yes, we get you. Yes. Yeah, murder. Uh, Jeff uh, <laughs> said, hey, I was listening to the show from the other day, and you guys were uh, doing the poll on the car the biggest asshole drivers are in. And at BMW, yeah, BMW ran away with that. I, they got, like, over 60% of the votes, and we had, I think, like, 10, 20 different models of cars on there. You guys seem shocked on that. I'm not shocked by that at all. I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, 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 I am. I th- thought it would be Nissan. I just think BMW has a reputation of well, being, they, I'm rich and I'm, I don't care about you. I, yeah, I did I did a search going through Reddits and a bunch of different threads, and BMW just crushed it every time. And, and every thread, national, local, whatever, it, it just BMW was always the top answer. And he said, um, you know, uh, just going along with that, you were, as you were saying, Beamer's right at that minute, um, this piece of work cut me off. <laughs> when I caught up at the light, I laughed at the plate. It is a white BMW, and the license plate says, Kiss My Bleep. It's just oh. blank, but it says, Kiss My, and it's a blank, and it's a BMW. So it's, sassy. But that, I guess that's the attitude. Yeah. It, what is it about? Because, you know, honestly, in South Florida, you got to say, BMWs are not the most high-end car that we have on our roadways. No. But I think there's a reputation, just overall still, that it is. Even for, for me, keep in mind, they've had that reputation of being rich for a very long time. Well, I have, I have a theory, because when I first got to town, and we were talking about what was the culture shock last year week or when you got to South Florida. And one of the culture shocks for me was the luxury cars. Where I came from, you never saw that, man. If, if a Mercedes drove through my town, it would stop the whole town. It would be on the front page. There would be a photo of it. Like People would be talking about, this is a freaking Mercedes. I remember the first time I ever rode in a Mercedes, I wanted to call all my old high school friends and be like, guys, I'm freaking in a Mercedes, man. I can't believe this. This is so unbelievable. But when I got to town and I started to get more acclimated to it, I'd see people drive BMWs. I'm like, oh, I can't believe they're in a BMW. And I started knowing these people a little bit more. I'm like, how's that motherfucker in a BMW? Like, I know what they do. Like, how, how are you making this all work? And I started to understand the economics of the BMWs a little bit more. And I think it's some of the people that are kind of assholes that don't have the money, but they want to act like they got the money. And so they go with the BMW route and they take that attitude like there's some rich, big hot shot and they drive that way. That's you, can buy, f- you can buy a used BMW, too. Absolutely. And keep in mind, they got that 3 Series, which, you know, you got different series of BMWs. You got right. the 3, 5, the 7, the S, and all that. And they're not all created alike, man. You look at the price tag on a 3 versus a high-end 7 or an S Series, and it's, you know, one is for the rich, one is for the asshole. And Absolutely. I, I think if you had to look, why do you hate the BMW drivers? I bet a lot of it's 3 Series drivers. Dang. That's just the psychology of it. Now, it's, it's a hypothesis that I have. It's a theory. If you have it, the cheap BMW, you a dick. You're one of those. How many fakers do we have in South Florida? <laughs> People that want to act like they're rich and something that they're not. You're able to fake the funk yeah. for, a, for a certain amount of time and, and, and look like you've, you're, I'm rich. And but got you my, carry yourself like you're a yeah. rich asshole and you're not. You're a faker and you got the car that proves it and you drive like it. It's just thought.
Just it's stop. it's yeah, and, and we all agree El Camino, <laughs> tre- creepy. El Camino, I don't know, likes to diddle. I say that's what it, it's got that reputation or that air of something's no good going on with that El Camino. I just think now, I mean, does, how many people still know you got to be a certain age to know an El Camino? When did they stop making El Camino? It's been a minute. I, I, I just there were so many in the town I grew up in, Lake Park. It just was always. It, so many, and everyone that drove one was always creepy. I don't know. Maybe I'm bringing my own baggage into it. Again, much like Bubba they Gums. They have not made the El Camino since 1987. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, your references have got to be. But wouldn't that fucking be tight to have an El Camino, Jaybird? I would like, like one a, like now. A, like a fixed if, up if one? Yeah, if you did it tricked out now, because it's, it's a car truck. It's the most ridiculous looking vehicle. <laughs> it's it is. awesome. It's the mullet of cars. It is the mullet of cars. Yeah, yeah and you're right. It was it was it, they finally killed it about the time the mullet was dying. How about that? I think that everyone just said, well, I think people died, people at El Camino, they had mullets. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about putting on an air, Richard uh, was laughing about the commentary about Jenny from the block and uh, Jennifer Lopez and uh, how the video really came off as pretentious. Meanwhile, the song is all singing about, hey, no, I'm still one of you. And people from her own block were saying, nobody lived like that. Like, we didn't <laughs> drive those cars. We didn't dress like that. Like, I don't know where you're thinking this block is, but this ain't the block. There's the, cause I've been, for some reason, I got into not liking J-Lo. She, mm-hmm. I, I, she was so unlikable, I kind of got addicted to it. So I went down this rabbit hole, and one of her classmates that she went to school with got on social media and called her out on all of her lies. And, th- and she said, you sat between this person and this person in sixth period. Stop acting like you, you, you came from the block. There is no block, Jenny. Yeah. Damn. She yeah. I think You're from the block of lies. I think, she'd be, I think she rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Well, and I think this is, remember how people did not like the the whole Benefer thing, and I think this this video had a lot to do with it because Richard said, "Yeah, that whole video was shot in California. Why would you have a song about Jenny from the Block?" And <laughs> it's all what is it? The Bronx is that what the yeah. Block was? Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, it's just how disconnected. I think now she realizes, "Wow, what a what a fail that was. That was really stupid." I'm not kidding you. The the, the documentary with the J-Lo one that's out right now. They, ben Affleck's in it quite a bit, and that guy looks sad to me. He looks like he... First of all, I'm afraid... Well, they try to make like jokes he, of it. It is odd, yeah. He, I think he's afraid to even t- tell her how he feels, because even if, he's like, I don't really want to be doing the documentary, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put my, my world out there on social media. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I can't, uh, I can't stop her, right? <laughs> <laughs> Almost like he's a hostage. Jeez. It's he, kind of funny. He's like sad man. There, there are. You could put together a montage of the most uh, tortured-looking spouses. <laughs> he looks kind of <laughs> tortured, man. You know what special I did watch, and the spouses look super happy, and I'm so glad I watched it. Uh-huh. That Beckham one. Yeah, yeah, that was no, so good. I, they are legit. They seem like they thoroughly enjoy each other's company. I agree with you. Yeah, they've got a great connection. That one I'm buying. They're both so hot. I mean, how yeah. could you not? I yeah. mean, if I looked at him or if I was him looking at her, I'd be like, that is great. Yeah. <laughs> They're so hot. They are, and I'm and I'm and I'm I'm buying into it. I am buying into it too. There are some celebrity mm-hmm. couples that I do buy into their love. Kevin Bacon and Kira Kate, Sedgwick. They love each other, I feel like. I think I, you're I think right. that's the real deal. I think Goldie Hawn and Kurt uh, Russell. I think they love yep. each other. Yeah. I liked the Beckhams because it was really, Panda liked it because it was very sportsy. There was a lot about like his soccer career. I liked it because you really saw like a peek into their relationship and you saw like how they function, how their kids and their family and all that. Like it was really well done. Do you think Dax Shepard and his, uh, Kristen Bell, are they yep. the real deal? Yep. I, 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 yeah. think, I think so. They, I think they, they seem are. legitimately like they get each other and they have a really good time with each other. Do they I, rub I'm you the wrong it. way at all? No, I think they're super smart and I, I think they're super appreciative of each other. I, I think they're fun. You don't mm-hmm. like them? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Who do, who don't you like her or him? I don't know. Maybe I think again it might be within within me. I don't know. I think they are. Look at me, you know. And I think sometimes maybe they set up scenarios. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm on the fence right now. 
Interesting. You want to see a uh, funny shot of somebody who doesn't look like they liked their spouse? You got to see Melania standing with Donald on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> It's just fucking comedy, man. <laughs> she looks tortured. <laughs> He's just spouting off, and she's just looking like, oh, my God. Oh, everything's going to heat up. The face. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's only just begun. Yeah. yeah but it's only just begun. Yeah. If she's got that face now, boy, wait till November. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> she's yeah. not going to be able to hide it. Yeah, that's fast. Yeah, they're on Palm Beach on Saturday, making a ton of money. I'd imagine just going through a whole campaign and running. You got to. You have to be exhausted. Yeah. Especially if exhausted. you're not. If yeah. you're not a political person, but you got to stand by your uh -huh. man, and yeah. you're like up there, and you just want to be home watching TV. She's over something. I. You don't know what it is. You don't know <laughs> if it's him or politics or everything. All I don't know. of it. All of it. Yeah, but yeah, she <laughs> has a look like I'm just over this. Their son is like 10 feet tall. He's amazing how tall he is. Oh my yeah. gosh. Crazy, right? That is insane to me. How do kids not playing basketball over there at Oxbridge? I don't know, man. You'd think they'd be state champs. He could touch the hoop. Yeah, no doubt. The top of it. Massively tall. Massively tall. Um, another, I was kind of surprised a little bit by this. Were you surprised by the Sasha Baron Cohen, Isla Fisher split up? Yeah, I was. I mean, the timing makes sense now because he's got the accusations with Rebel Wilson going on, but I don't know if that's what necessarily did it. But after 14 years, they're gone. They always, it was always kind of a weird thing with them. Did you ever buy that? Did they seem like an odd fit? To you, when it, when it comes to all these couples, that's why the, the the few I just rattled off, I I I don't, I never think it's gonna last with celebrities because most of the time it doesn't, and I'm not shocked at all. It's it's not a good environment for a, a long term relationship. And plus, I mean, that guy has to be extra. Yeah, I, I wonder. Uh, yeah, you would think. I mean, if he's if he's that way ever, he might be every now. But I don't know. But is that how he is in relationships? I know some, right. someone's probably saying, Bird, you got some balls calling someone extra. <laughs> but I, I'm I would be different in a relationship than I would be on the microphone. Bird, mm. you just like guacamole. You extra. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon here, uh, give it a little perspective to the Roadhouse movie that is on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Say, so Kevin, you said you don't like the premise of the movie because the Keys Tiki Bars don't get that rowdy. However, that doesn't come into play with the movie because the elites are paying a biker gang to go into the bar and tear shit up so that the bar owner will set it up or sell it to the elites. Okay. All right. The rest is just some guys getting into scuffles. I didn't watch the first Roadhouse, so I wasn't born yet, but uh, I did enjoy the new one. Maybe that has something to do with it, like you mentioned, I don't know if that changes your no. That that does that does make a little bit of sense. Yeah, I, I think too. You know, I, for people who like the old school Roadhouse, if they would have called it just a different movie, I it, I, I see why people like it. Yeah, I, I it's mean, an, it's it's, an, it's a it's a it's a balls to the wall action movie. A lot of people seem to be all into it. So. And you said Conor McGregor is great. I thought yeah. I I, I, liked I always it. like him. He is lippy and he is crazy, and I appreciate those qualities. He, I, I usually love the villains in the movies, and he did a very good job being a villain. Just, I don't think he's acting. Yeah, I just he, I think he's just being his true self. He is lippy and he brings it. Do you know some people just pop on screen? Yes, he's a guy. He goes on screen and you go. I, I want to watch what he's. He just he kind of yeah. steals the show. If he's doing it, I'm watching. Well, he was that way in MMA. I don't know what you know uh, how people would regard him as a fighter. I'm not plugged in that way, but the he was a great uh, person for MMA because anything I ever knew about it, it was watching his theatrics. He was doing something, or he's trying to run down, uh, you know, some kind of fighter. And after the match, I think he threw a chair through something. It just was you know crazy. Oh yeah, he got in real fights backstage with people that were getting on and off tour buses and like. There was lawsuits and stuff over all that. Like he wasn't just mad in the ring; he uh, was he was taken into the street. I want to say he broke his nose during the filming of it. Did he? Okay, I think he, I think he took a punch. It, huh? I think he took a wow. punch or something. And I, I could be wrong though. Okay, I've been wrong a lot with these roadhouse. I, he he might have took a punch. I'm sure he gave a punch too. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that bitch does not play. Talking about uh, throwing a chair, Morgan Wallen got arrested, I guess, uh, overnight. Oh, boy. And uh, he chucked a chair 
I guess from what it sounds like, he was at the rooftop bar of Chiefs. Um, if you don't know, that's Eric Church. Eric Church is, he did drink in my hand. He's a rambling kind of more of a little bit on the rock side of country. Okay. And he has a song out right now with Morgan Wallen. And so this is his place, Eric Church's place, Chiefs. That's kind of his little nickname. And Got so it. Morgan Wallen was likely drunk. Felt probably emboldened because he's like, I got a hit song on a fucking radio with this guy. You know? <laughs> and there you go. He is so lucky he didn't kill somebody because that Broadway stays packed. Even yeah. at 9 a.m., I was just there. Yeah. The street is always packed with people. And if he would have killed somebody with that chair... He would be facing murder charges. Is is it yeah. a, a story of him getting mad and throwing it, or is he being a jackass th- thinking it's funny? No details on that. It just says oh, they'll that, come out. Um, yeah, he was detained uh, twelve thirty six a.m. this morning. Three counts of felony reckless endangerment, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, along with holy shit, along with misdemeanor disorderly conduct. I guess maybe that's all from the chair. Uh, the police say video captured him hurling. The chair from the sixth story of the building landing within a few feet of three police officers below. Oh, oh my gosh. God. If he would have killed a cop, he, he would have been done. He was reportedly laughing and jovial at the time of the incident. He is free on $15,000 bond, and there is his mugshot, and he looks very pleased oh, with himself. This oh, is no. not good. Oh, That's not shit. a good look, bruh. He might, be, he might be sitting it out for a minute again. Well, he just, you know what, I was, I was telling Virginia, I don't know how much he drinks, but I'll tell you, he has a drinking problem because drinking causes a lot of problems in his life. He and needs a handler. Yes. when To me, when you're drinking is causing a lot of problems in your life, to me, by definition, you have a drinking problem. Agreed. So he's got to figure something out because, yeah, he is... He skirted it on his using the unspeakable word in that video, was put on the bench for a while, brought back in. The dude's freaking talented, man. Maybe the most talented thing the country has right now. But eventually, man, it's going to run out. Like you said, inches from a cop, three cops down below. It, you, you change that direction of that chair a little bit. and We could be talking about a different story well, here today. I think he's probably a wild card by nature. Then all of a sudden, you go, you throw drinking into Country's it. And then we, and, you ego. Know, and then, like you just said, I got a fucking number one song. Yeah, Cut. last night we let the <laughs> liquor talk. Give me yeah. that chair. <laughs> shit, this shit gonna be funny. Shit. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a... He's a fucking cowboy he's a fucking cowboy but he needs a fucking handler he does man. he needs somebody who is in charge and it may be a team of people but they just have to go with him he can't be trusted to his own devices now because he could throw it all away well yeah. the fact that the fact well, the thing that's really gonna bite him in the ass is that the fact that it was it almost hit people yeah and they were police officers and the mug shot, the mug shot of him looking all proud is not going to laugh. That's just not. I, I think music, you know, in, in different genres, you kind of see this. They have this where the uh, artists want authenticity. You've seen it in hip hop. And, you know, you got to be streets and thug and you got to be all this kind of stuff and the guns and the drugs and flashing the cash and all that. And in a country, you know, it's it's kind of like you're uh, I mean, this. This is an Eric Church song. This is whose bar it was. This is who he has the song with. This is who he pals around with. He had a song, uh, Break It Kind of Guy. I woke up feeling dangerous, put some bullets in my gun, brown liquor in my coffee, and I called the boss's son. Tell him off, basically. I'm a gambling man. And the songs are all about drinking. I got guns. Don't fuck with me. He's a cowboy. You know? that, exactly. Right. That, that cowboy mentality is really what I, I mean. Shut chairs off of bars. This is just, and, and people, there's a sect of that. They applaud that. Like, yeah. Yeah, look at you, man. You're a badass. And dude, it's a business, man. It's Just not, be careful. It's not yep. the 70s and 80s anymore. Right, and, exactly. And it used to be, it really was praised and oh my gosh, rock and roll. I don't think it's looked at it like that anymore. You're right. A subset is going to think, oh man, he's authentic. But he, he didn't yeah. hit them cops. Right. He didn't hit them. Some em. of his fans Fucking would high five him and they'd be like, dude, that's so whatever, rebel country or whatever. Father bringing country it. back. Like, uh, 
he's a fucking moron for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stop so, being a fucking moron, you fucking moron. Yeah. You got so, too much to lose. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways that you can try to come off badass and do all that kind of stuff. Just chucking a chair off a rooftop bar, man. And that happens. That's not the first time I've heard that. That happens a good amount. I'm just wondering how long before they have a serious injury before they they need to start taking the freaking chairs off those upper decks. Just just anybody in in general, because you're right. People act a fool, and you never know if someone's mixing pills with their drinking. And then, because I've seen it happen before, where someone's fine. But 20 minutes later, they're a completely different person. They're a monster. Yeah. And that's a dangerous combination, man. Chairs. What could happen? What could go wrong? Uh-huh. Yeah. I think chairs on those decks probably need to be kept in the interior. Yeah. They all have an exterior, huge, big balcony now. All those bars. Yeah. And look, they're packed and they do very packed. well. And look, for 99.9% of the people that go there, it's not a problem. You know, they may be drunk and whatever, but not a lot of people are thinking, hey, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to throw a chair off a six story. It's that alcohol, man. It will get you. It will. It does. It will bite you in the dick eventually. That's why you have to really more drunk proof, I think, these rooftops. And that should probably be a code that they pass, an ordinance. Sorry, y'all motherfuckers got to stand. <laughs> you know? And that's Thank Morgan Wallen. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, somebody texted and said, Morgan Wall wasn't put on the bench. His fans made him top of the charts. Well, he was within the music industry. Keep in mind, he there were a couple award shows he wasn't allowed to show up at, and they, they tried to send a statement to him. That's what I'm referring to. So, yeah, he continued to crush it in sales. Yes. But yeah, no, he, he, was, he was put in timeout. They did kind of put him on the bench, and that's what I'm referring to. You're speaking on a corporate manager level. Yeah, right. Where they, where they, uh-huh. not, the, the fans did it. And he, yeah. was top of, he was top of the game then. And he so still they, stayed top. Yeah, they took the number one player out, and they said, yeah, you're you're in timeout. You're not showing up to this award show. You're not going to be on this tour. You're not going to play this performance. We're going to exile you for a year, and it'll well, try to make it look good, and hopefully you'll learn a lesson about it. Your boy uh, Bobby Bones did a whole segment where he's like, I don't think I want to play his music. So it, it was a thing where mm-hmm. people were making a stance on him. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. So there, there was stuff, and yeah, his, his sales continue to be strong. And oh, look, yeah. he, he makes great music. He is really good. He's a highly oh, talented dude. That Seven Summers, That's what, to me, yeah. that's one of the best songs to come out and sing it how's it go i i, I can't do it that right. was seven summers ago da, oh, da, da, okay. da, da, da. It's, it's it's a cool it's it, one of those songs like i said there's a lot of songs that they can they're not overly country and that, that's not that, that to me that sounds like just a 70s singer yeah. songwriter kind of something you'd hear on gold am radio right, that's kind of a country topic if you had a non-country fan friend that said they hated it what country song would you play for them and there's those you could have a category of palatable mainstream type country songs gotcha that aren't necessarily country in fact i saw today they were uh i was reading the country news and they they have now kind of pushed the avid brothers i know band you like they're in the country yeah they put them in the country mold now they are talented very talented Mm -hmm. they have have a very huge fan base but they're not necessarily a a household name right yeah yeah a little bit uh more on the lower end but But they they definitely got that singer songwriter kind of Mm -hmm. stuff they do as well that's a lot of it so there you go well, we'll see what uh, – it'll be interesting to see how the Morgan Wallen story uh, develops today and what kind of uh, timeout will he get for his latest. He is a lucky duck that that chair didn't hit any people. I promise you the meetings right now as we speak in Nashville are about what are we going to do with Morgan Wallen. That's exactly what everybody's talking Who about. Who was right in now. charge of watching him? Yep. That person's fired. <laughs> Probably, yeah. They'll fire 10 people for the dumbass thing he did. It sounds right. like you was just a drunk acting a fool thinking right. just being, oh, it's going to be funny Morgan shit. Morgan being Morgan. I get it. Yeah. If you're drunk in your mind, I'm the, I'm the biggest freaking guy in this town. When I was in Nashville, he played three sold-out shows at the arena next door, and it was crazy, all the people that were going in. Yeah, he is arguably the number one guy in country, so I get that. You're in Nashville. You're crushing it. But if you just were, can't crush people. Right. <laughs> You're crushing it. Right. You don't want to crush humans. Crush the game, not the cops. <laughs> oh, if he would have killed a cop, oh. he'd been fucked. Yikes. Yes, he would have. All right, y'all. Have a great Monday. We're back here to talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.